This is Common Core State Standard Support video for mathematics. The standard is 2NBT.9. This standard reads, explain why addition and subtraction strategies work using place value and the properties of operations. So it's a fairly simplistic uh, standard. So let's look at uh, the related and connected standards to this. If we look at uh, 2NBT5, that one states fluently add and subtract within 100. This is also connected to 2NBT6, which involves adding up to four two-digit numbers using strategies based on place value and properties of operations. Also 2NBT.7, add and subtract within 1,000 using concrete models or drawings and strategies based on place value and properties of operations. Also related to standard 2NBT.9 is standard 2NBT.8, which states mentally add or subtract 10 or 100 to a given number 100 to 900. At this level, strategies for adding and subtracting whole numbers will be based primarily on definitions and conventions regarding place value in the base 10 system. So that's very important. That's the foundation. The fundamental idea that only like items can be added or subtracted is critical also. We will use the commutative property of addition and the associative property of addition. And it's important to go ahead and use the formal terms uh, in this way, students will already know the proper terminology and they won't have to take a simpler uh, term that has been taught to them and throw that out and learn the proper terms later. The concept of equality will be used extensively. A lot of basic arithmetic is about composing, decomposing, and rearranging items. Conservation of number is important as is the substitution principle. Just a little bit of review. The, the conservation of number refers to the idea that if a group of objects is rearranged, the number of objects still remains the same. So if I started off with uh, two sets of three like I have here, I could rearrange them to say a set of four and a set of two, but I've still got the same amount. Nothing changed other than the positions. Related to this is the substitution principle. And that states that one expression can be replaced with another as long as they're of equal value. But that deals more with written symbolism. So for example, the two groups of three, I could express as three plus three, and I can replace that with four plus two because they are equivalent. And in turn, I can substitute six for the four plus two because again, they are of equal value. So with that out of the way, we need to understand that at this stage, any strategy for addition or subtraction will pretty much typically involve a combination of the substitution principle, place value, the commutative property, and the associative property. Now, what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and use primarily three-digit numbers. Depending on where your students are, they might uh, be more at the two-digit number stage. For the purposes of this video, we'll be concentrating and using three-digit numbers. Now, your second graders may not be ready for three-digit adding and subtracting, so you might work with them with two-digit numbers instead, but it's still the same strategies. Uh, we'll still be using the same properties, but go ahead and use them with two-digit numbers instead of three-digit numbers until such time as they transition with concrete manipulatives to adding and subtracting with three-digit numbers like we'll be doing here. So let's start off with this example. Here, let's use the basic idea of place value and break this problem into actually three smaller addition problems, where again, we took the initial addition problem and we're breaking it up based on place value to where we're adding the hundreds, tens, and ones separately. So if we do that, we've got 500 plus 150 plus 11. We can combine the hundreds, 500 and 150, to be 650. And at the same time, we can break the 11 down to 10 plus 1, which makes it a little bit simpler. Now we can just combine the 650 and the 10 to be 660, add our 1 to get our final uh, sum of 661. Now let's try combining three numbers. And let's use the idea of place value again. 
where we break this up into, again, their appropriate hundreds, tens, and ones. Now, here's what we did here. Now we're using the commutative and associative properties where we're changing the order to where we have all of our hundreds together, we have all of our tens together, and all of our ones together. But notice that we still have the numbers that we started off with. For example, we still have 243. We still have 187. And we still have 300. And 61. So in essence, again, we haven't changed anything. We just we just use our commutative and associative properties to rearrange our place values. So now it's a matter of actually doing the computing. We can add our hundreds to be 600. Now notice on the tens, if students can fluently add within a hundred, they should recognize that the 40 plus the 60 is a hundred. So if you rearrange those to make it a little bit simpler. So now we can combine that to be 100. So now we uh, continue with the computation. Combine 600 and 100, that's 780. Ah, again, notice 3 plus 7 is 10. So if you convert that very quickly, now we have 780 plus 10 would be 790, plus one more is 791. Now at a later stage, depending on where your students are, probably at a, at a subsequent grade level, they can almost take this strategy and do this mentally, and if nothing else, uh, even to estimate for reasonableness as far as you know, what kind of answer they should get. So if you look and take your hundreds, just like you did before, but we're doing it mentally. We got two and one, that's three, that's 600. And then our tens, uh, 640. Uh, and eight more, that's 720. Uh, with the 6, that's 780, and then 783, 790, 791. So again, uh, it's possible that students can do this mentally, although at this stage they probably aren't ready. Let's take this addition problem. Now students should notice that 87 is pretty close to 100, so 287 is pretty close to 300. So why don't we convert the 287 to 300 minus 13. So now the addition becomes just 374 plus 300, that's 674. But now we have to subtract 13, and that shouldn't be too difficult. We just do our basic subtraction, and we get 661 just like we did previously, but we did it using a totally different strategy. Let's take this problem again. Now notice that 74 is pretty close to 100. In fact, it's 26 away. Now, it sure would be nice if we could combine 74 with 26. So we can take 26 out of the 287. So if we do that, we'll get 261. So in essence, your 287 will break down to 26 plus 261. So now we have a nice uh, combination here. So we can combine 374 and 26 to be 400. And now we just add in our 261, which will give us 661, just like before. Let's try a subtraction problem. Now notice what's going to be difficult here is that we're going to have to do some decomposing because of the ones place and also the tens place. But first, let's review a little bit. It's really important that students understand that Operations, just like numbers, can be separated into different chunks or steps. In other words, something like subtracting 9 would be the same thing as subtracting 7 and then subtracting 2. Now, numerically, it would look like this. And no, we're not jumping the gun. Uh, we're not dealing with negatives here. What we have here, and again, you have to think of it uh, this way, I am simply saying here what we said here that subtracting 9 is the same thing as subtracting 7 and then subtracting 2. So taking that basic idea here, subtracting 287 will be the same thing as subtracting 200, then subtracting 80, then subtracting 7. In fact, that's what we do in the standard algorithm, but we do it in reverse order. First we subtract 7 in the ones place, and then we subtract 80, and then we subtract 200. Now, we're not limited to place value. 
For example, subtracting 287 would be the same thing as subtracting 250 and then subtracting 37. In fact, we could break this down to whatever we needed to depending on the context. So if we look at our problem again and start thinking in this manner, let's break it up into place value. So what I've, again, what I've done is we've taken this one subtraction problem and actually split the subtraction up into three different subtractions where we're subtracting 200, subtracting 80, and subtracting 7. But this still leaves us with the problem of having to compose and decompose because of these two situations with the ones in the tens place. Well, why don't we do this? Isn't subtracting 80 the same thing as subtracting 70 and subtracting 10? And then over here, subtracting 7 would be the same thing as subtracting 4 and then subtracting 3. So, see the advantage here? What's happened here is that this here will give us a 0 and this will give us a 0 when we do the subtracting. So now we're left with a fairly simple problem where now we have 100 and then we have to subtract 10 and subtract 3. So 100 minus 10 is 90 and then 90 minus 3 is 87. Let's take that same problem again and this time it sure would be nice if this was a 74 here, if it was 274. That way it would be again a nice simple subtraction. So what's the difference between the 87 and the 74 here? Well it's 13. So we should be able to take a 13 out of the 287 and if we do Again, there was a difference of 13, so the subtracting 287 would be the same thing as subtracting 274 and then subtracting 13. So with that in mind, let's uh, rework it and break the subtracting of 287 to subtracting 274 and then subtracting 13. Now we're left with 100 minus 13, and if subtracting 13 is still a little bit too difficult, we can break that down to subtracting 10 and subtracting 3. So now we have 90 minus 3, which is again our 87. Oh, remember these problems? These were difficult because of the, well, back then it was called borrowing, but now, okay, okay let's go with you know, decomposing. So even with the new terminology, this is still difficult. Now, isn't 600 the same thing as 599 plus 1? So if we did this, it should make the subtraction a lot simpler because there is no decomposing to be done because we have nines for our ones digit and our tens digit. So there'll be no decomposing that we have to do because a nine is as big as you can get as far as your place value. So now we simply do our subtraction, 131, and of course don't forget the plus one to get our answer of 132. Let's look at this problem. It's also difficult because of that same situation. We uh, ha would have to decompose both our ones and tens places. If we do something similar to what we did a while ago, we can take the 416, break it down to 400 plus 16, and then uh, take the 400, break it down to 399 plus 1. Then we can combine the 1 and the 16 to be 17, and so now we're set. So now we can uh, convert this, the 416 to 399 plus 17. Now we can do our subtraction where we don't have to do any decomposing. That's 151 plus 17. And uh, we can break the 17 down to 10 plus 7. Combine that and get 161. And now we can get our final solution of 168. So these are some basic uh, examples of what you can do using some of your basic properties at this level. Uh, again, focusing on place value, the substitution principle, and then when needed, use our commutative and associative properties to change the order or, the regroup, or to regroup. If your students are not ready for three-digit computation, uh, focus on the two-digit computation and then slowly build up to the three digits that we've been doing here as examples.